Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, JK Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, we're going to be speaking about different ways of changing your negative thinking. Now, brothers, negative thoughts often influence our actions and our feelings And unfortunately, they can serve as fuel for our porn, sex, or masturbation addiction. A lot of these negative thoughts come up in a seemingly uncontrolled way, which means that they are absolutely unpredictable and they come up at random times. And the problem is they are often the same negative thoughts. They are often pessimistic in nature and they have very deep roots in our past. They lead to intense emotions and actions which are not in line with the way that we want to live. Now, every one of these negative thoughts carries a little bit of truth with it. Unfortunately, that truth has been distorted or hidden. And what we're going to be doing today is learning how to uncover it, make sure it's accurate. And if it isn't accurate, replace it with an accurate, truthful thought. And then I'm also going to teach you how to put this into a system whereby you can repeat it over and over again with different thoughts and maintain it through the term of your reboot lifestyle. So there are about five steps to going through this process of changing our negative thoughts. The first thing is we have to be able to identify the negative thought. The second thing is we need to analyze it and actually find out that it's negative. And once we find out that it's negative, we need to reject it. The third step is we need to replace the negative thought with a positive one. The fourth one is we need to build in a system to repeat that positive thought until it becomes a belief. And the fifth step is we need to be able to incorporate it into our reboot lifestyle so that we never fall back on this negative thought which we have been using in our lives for years and years. So let's dive into them. The first one is identifying the negative thought. Now, we sometimes have difficulty recognizing our negative thoughts for what they are. And as you grow in your reboot, brothers, you're going to be able to recognize those negative thoughts which are destructive, those which are often pessimistic, and those which are intrusive. Because when you're able to recognize them, you find out that you're often a slave to these negative thoughts. You cannot be a slave to something which is absolutely untrue and absolutely invalid. So let's start with this. I would like you to take a moment, if you're at home or in your office or somewhere where you're seated and not driving or not mobile, Take a moment and identify three to four negative thoughts which you have experienced recently. And they don't have to be directly related to your porn addiction. If they are, that's fine. If not, that's okay. The second step is we now have to reject these negative thoughts. Now, what we're going to be doing with these thoughts that you've listed out is we're going to analyze them for a little bit. We're going to find out if it is a damaging or a destructive thought. Now, if you find out that it is a destructive thought, if you find out that it is a damaging thought, then you have to let it go. The truth is that you don't have to believe that every thought you have, which you have kept with you for a long time, is a thought which is helpful to you. You might feel that it's helpful. You might feel that perhaps it has protected you. But what you haven't done for years is actually sat down, written out the thought, which is pen to paper, and ask yourself the emotions that come up when you take a look at this thought. Oftentimes, you will find that it is negative. It is negative emotions which come up. And oftentimes, you will find yourself justifying or rationalizing your need for that thought in your life. Well, if I don't have this thought, then, you know, I'm not going to be protected. You know, I'm going to be somebody that others take advantage of. I'm going to be hurt, right? I'll give you an example. When you are online, 
right? And you are scrolling through different websites or you're visiting different websites. As you go to these websites, you'll notice that sometimes there are different pop-ups which come up, right? There might be a pop-up which asks you for your email address. There might be pop-ups which uh, basically asks your permission to track you using cookies. There might be pop-ups which advertise something or one discount or the other. When all these pop-ups come up, do you click on everything? No, you don't. One of the things that you do is you are quickly and instantaneously identifying whether the information which is coming up on that pop-up is relevant to you or not. So all these are different requests which are coming up, but we automatically close them out. In fact, sometimes we find them to be a nuisance, but we don't know why. We're just like, ah, oh, just get out of my way. And you click the X, the little X on the corner, and you move on. Well, the same way that you identify that a certain piece of information is irrelevant is the same way that you are going to start identifying and rejecting negative thoughts as they come up. We do it in a similar way. Throughout the day, you're going to have many thoughts which are going to show up, just like a pop-up, which basically represents some sort of information which is not relevant to you. Oftentimes, the information which comes up is inappropriate to the time or the situation that you're dealing with, just as many of those pop-ups are. So the truth is, brothers, many of our thoughts are distorted, they are inaccurate, and they are mistaken. They are showing up at the wrong time, and we need to start treating them that way. So the mindset that I want you to use is to start imagining these negative thoughts which come up as pop-ups, which are completely irrelevant to your life. Imagine yourself going through the internet and every single website that you come across, you decide that you are going to engage with a pop-up. Yes, you can track me. Yes, you can send me spam. Yes, you can send me this, you can send me that. That's no way to spend your time in the online environment, and you already know that. So let's go back to those three to four negative thoughts that you wrote out. And I'd like you to take some time, and for each of them, I would like you to write out a conscious statement for that particular thought in which you are either rejecting or refusing that particular negative thought or belief. And when you do so, I want you to start using it mentally every time that thought comes up. So what this means is, let's say you have a thought which is, I can end this behavior on my own. Now, as you guys already know, I'm a little biased to this, but I identified this as a negative thought. I can end this behavior on my own. When the reality is you struggled with it for 12, 13, 16 years, and you actually haven't done anything about it. So let's say you end up visiting a therapist's office or going to a group or speaking to some professional to help you. And as they speak to you, or as you read their book, or as you look through the brochure, or as somebody is speaking to you about it, the thought comes up that you can do this on your own. What I want you to do is I want you to write out a statement. The statement I used to write out is, I am not a lone wolf. I need help. I need to be part of a pack in order to succeed in life. Another one you can write out is, no man is an island. I need help to accomplish everything that I need to. Another one is, there's nothing like a self-made man. Behind every self-made man is a team or a group of people who help that individual get to where he is today. So whatever the statement, these are statements I just came up with, but over time, they're about the, I would say they're the top three statements I use every time I have a negative thought, which is I can do something which I've struggled with for a while on my own. So come up with the statements for each of your negative thoughts and start using them. The third step is to now switch out the negative thoughts with positive thoughts. Now, after you've rejected a negative thought, you wanna find a positive alternative or some sort of substitute. So start thinking about things which are right and things which are true instead. So for instance, if you're going through your reboot and you've slipped again, maybe you've slipped three times in a week or 
you found yourself slipping three times in a day after you did so well. You can change the statement of, I'm never going to be able to do this, instead to, I am making progress because I am identifying the depth of my weakness. This is a very powerful and a very important one. We often feel that repeated slips or a relapse are negative things, but there's nothing wrong with actually finding out how weak you are. When you find out how weak you are and how deep into your failure you can go, that is often the catalyst for seeking help. In fact, I was speaking with one of my reboot specialists yesterday during a meeting, and we had a guy who had just joined our program, and he didn't know about porn addiction, I think about a couple of weeks ago, and he was struggling with porn-induced erectile dysfunction. He had visited all sorts of professionals who were trying to treat him for erectile dysfunction, but nothing had been working over the years. Finally, he came across some material which spoke about porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And then he thought about his porn use for the first time in his life. And I believe this brother is in his 30s. And he had always thought that pornography was something that everybody did, that there wasn't anything wrong with it. He just thought that his erectile dysfunction was something psychological or it was something that had to do with age or a health-related issue. But for the first time ever, he was able to connect the dots between his behavior with pornography and masturbation, which was almost daily since he hit puberty, and his porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And he said that that was a blessing, that if he did not hit rock bottom in his sexual life and his sexual performance, he would never have found out about porn addiction. He would never have taken it seriously. So there's always a silver lining to every problem that we have, all right? So take a moment and write out some of those negative thoughts. So for instance, you may have a negative thought like, you know, no one cares about me. No one actually loves me, right? Write down the truth that there are people who love me. There are people who care about me. I'm just focusing on the people who I want to love me and the people I want to care about me. And many of us who have parents who care about us, who have siblings who care about us, but we never pay attention to them. We're always seeking love and validation. We're always seeking it in different places where it's not available. And when we don't get it from these individuals, we then assume that it doesn't exist. Many of us are seeking love and validation from beautiful women. And then when we don't get that, we feel that we are incapable of being loved when we don't realize that there are so many other people who do care about us, right? Sometimes we say that we're foolish. I'm foolish, I'm stupid, I'm an idiot. You know, I'm a fool, I just don't learn from my lessons. But you aren't. You're alive, you're listening to this podcast. There are things that you have done in your life that got you to the point where you're still alive, you're still able to put food on the table. You probably have a roof over your head. It may be your roof, it may not be your roof, but the truth is you're smart enough to not be out on the streets. So you're not an idiot, right? Some guys feel that their, their future is doomed. There is no future for me, but is that true? Well, I'm in my, my, my 40s, I'm in my 50s. In fact, this reminds me of another story of an individual that I spoke to a few weeks ago. Now, this is not, a happy story where this individual ends up in my program. This was a man who was actually a good fit for my program, but I got sad. And one of the reasons why I slowly started removing myself from the calls as I spend more time with my clients in group coaching is because I am a professional brothers, but I'll be very honest with you. I dealt with this problem intensely for many, many years. This ate up a chunk of my life. As I've mentioned many times, till today, I'm still paying the price for my behavior, right? And it does hurt me when I see men who believe that their future is hopeless. I understand from a psychological and professional perspective where that comes from, but it is saddening when I have a conversation with a man and both of us go deep. He gets it. I get it. We we know he, he knows, he's like, this is a man who has been to the depth that I'm at right now. But the saddening part is where the man is so comfortable 
in his hopelessness that he chooses to stay there. Like it's his choice. It's He could come out of it. He even says he could. But he's just comfortable. He's too lazy to put in the work. And he's not dead. Right? You know, he's not happy, but he's comfortable. This individual will probably never have sex again. Right? He's in his 40s. He feels like it's too late to get into a relationship. He feels it's too late to have his dream body. He feels that it's too late for him to quit porn. Like, dude, you're like, you're just 10 years older than me. Like, I plan to be in great shape well into my 80s and 90s, right? We live in the most technologically advanced time in human history. We can live longer. We can look good better. We can overcome so many addictions. We have free access to information. But he chose to be comfortable. And this came from his repeated negative thinking until it conditioned him to become this sort of individual. So if you have a belief like, there is no hope for me in the future, I want you to take a moment and write down a statement which rejects this, right? I just gave you an example of one. Another one is, I will never be able to beat this porn addiction. And we all know that's a lie. But we also know that when that lie is whispered to us, after or especially after we have sought out help from many people, those of you who are religious, who have fallen down on your knees and you have been saved, those of you who fell into your faith, or rather fell back on your faith when you had, you had no faith and you had rejected your religion for years, and you felt that that helped you beat your addiction, but two years later you were back into it. Those of you who have been to therapy, those of you who have been through years and years of 12-step programs, those of you who have read everything and studied every study that there is about addiction, who are still relapsing and have the belief that you will never beat this addiction, you do not have clarity. Your thinking is distorted. You need to simplify the way you think. More knowledge does not equal less addiction. More exposure to different modalities does not increase your chances of recovering. There are hundreds of men whom I was the first person that they ever came across when it came to ending their out-of-control behavior with porn. And they have rewired their brain permanently. They have gone on to get married, to have kids, there are some who were divorced, who have gone on to get remarried, even have kids after that and continue their lives free of their behavior with pornography. So you can beat your addiction. You just need to change and reframe your negative thinking, right? So again, take the time to go through all those negative statements that you wrote out and write out a positive substitute for each one. The next step is to start using that positive substitute repeatedly. Now, because you have used this negative thinking so many times over and over again, it is going to be necessary for you to do the same with that positive thought. Brothers, this requires you to be intentional. One of the reasons why men are a part of the implementation program and the Porn Reboot Intensive program is because it is designed to actually help you practice little things like this. This is such a tiny, minute part of our program, but we put you in an accountability environment where you have no choice but to repeat this daily. It does take time and practice for the positive thoughts to start becoming natural. So it's important to repeat them over and over again. Now, of course, my so-called secret is now well known while I love to repeat them over and over again, I found that one of the easiest ways to do this was to record it on your phone. And at a certain time during the day, maybe while you were commuting to work or while you were working out, to listen to your voice telling you these positive thoughts in a convincing and compelling way on repeats over and over and over 
and over again. If you've got to take post-it notes and put it on your mirror in your bathroom, go ahead and do that. The fifth way is to make this part of a system. Make it a process that you can do over and over again. Now, the truth is, there are multiple negative thoughts which are not only a part of you, but which you are actually nurturing. There are things that you're dealing with in your life right now. And I don't know when you will listen to this episode, but this is during the time of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. And there are many negative and uncertain situations which we are dealing with. So you have a lot of negative thoughts in embryo. They're going to (laughs) grow, they're going to hatch, and they're going to become very strong thoughts. There's nothing you can do about that. But you can start replacing your previous negative thoughts and practicing with that. Once you make it a practice, your new negative thoughts will now have a system which you can use to switch them out. And the reason why I call it a system is because it varies for each man. All I'm giving you in the podcast is a guide. In the program, we have a more regimented way of doing this. But if you're not a part of the program, you can still do it using the information in this podcast. The way you say it to yourself, the sort of phrases which you use, how often you say it, the thought patterns you have while you're saying it, the time of the day when you say it varies from man to man. But it is important for you to find out the way that works best for you. Now, in order to be able to make this a system, you want to be able to identify a few situations which are likely to come up where you feel that you might be dealing with negative thoughts. Remember, one of the great benefits of a system which is used consistently is that it helps you develop the ability to predict And in our system, we call it the ability to predict your relapse. This is very powerful. When you are able to know weeks ahead, days ahead, hours ahead, that you are probably going to relapse, you gain power over your reboot. And this is something that in other systems out there takes years to develop. We teach you how to do that in 90 days. But that is one of the benefits of developing a system, all right? So when it comes to your negative thoughts, first of all, come up with a few situations where you feel that you are likely to start experiencing negative thoughts. And then I want you to take some time to reflect on the different ways where you can replace them with a positive thought, how you can reject that specific negative thought, and of course, how you can begin to recognize it. Now, this very simple process basically promotes positive thinking in the present moment. Brothers, it is very easy for you to be led by your feelings and to become very, very reactive to the world around you. I do want to take a moment to recognize the fact that many of us may have experienced relationship problems, breakups, you may be experiencing some current problems in your relationship, you may feel that it is a complex situation, right? Maybe your partner stepped out on you and you're dealing with the pain of that. Maybe your partner is not able or willing to have sex with you. Maybe you have stepped out on your partner. Maybe you are dealing with some mental or physical issue in your relationship. Maybe your partner has experienced a traumatic experience or you have experienced something traumatic like abuse or abandonment or neglect. Maybe both of you or you alone are dealing with a very significant loss in your life. There are so many places where negative thoughts can be nurtured, where they can grow. So... When it comes to getting rid of these distorted thoughts, these negative thoughts, brothers, going through this simple five-step process is going to help you stay in a place where you are emotionally healthy. It's very basic. That is the truth. It is common sense. 
and I'm taking my time today to break it down and make it as clear as possible because I want you to know that this is something which you cannot skip. Those of you who listen to this, who are smart, who are intelligent, who are listening to this and going, yeah, I know that. I know, yeah, yeah, you re replace the negative at the top with a positive one. I hear guys say this all the time, yet they have never replaced more than two negative thoughts in their entire life. Or you have an excuse. Yeah, I tried that, but that is one of the things that kills men. I tried that once before, but you're not going to make it. Anytime a guy just begins a sentence with me, has a conversation with me, and that drops in, I'm like, this guy who's going to lose. You tried it once, but bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I don't want to have a conversation with you because that is a habit pattern that's going to lead to failure. And I see men failing all the time. So brothers, as you may be starting to realize as we go through this journey of rebooting together, your thinking is a very important part of the reboot process. I hope you start taking it seriously. I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you tomorrow.